Yes, sir. So we can start up. Shall I start, sir? Yes, Malati. Please go ahead. Okay. A very good evening to one and all present here. I'm Malati from KCG College of Technology, from in Information Technology Department. I'm very grateful to the Institution of Engineering and Technology and KCG College of Technology for giving the opportunity to learn about the importance of artificial intelligence and machine learning by organizing this session. The Institution of Engineering and Technology, IEP, is a multidisciplinary professional engineering institution, which paves a new career path for young innovators. The RNU provides new gen ideas for techno entrepreneurs. IIT collaboration with KCG College of Technology is a boon to the students, and KCG College of Technology is an ideal place for the wholesome development of engineers. In the first session, we have learned about revolution of AI and ML in core engineering in aerospace, aeronautical, and robotics in the mechanical field, and second session in healthcare. And in today's session, we will be learning about revolution of AI and ML in core engineering in electrical and electronics engineering. Next slide. I request all the participants to keep your mic mute during the session and also request participants to raise your hands to clarify your doubts. You can post your questions in QA box. And at the end of a session, a feedback will be provided or kindly give your valuable feedback so that we can enhance in our next session. Now, I kindly welcome Dr. J. Frank Vijay, Head of Information Technology Department, KCG College of Technology, to give the welcome address. Thank you, Maladi. So good evening to everyone present over here. So thank you very much for joining us today for this great event. So we are pleased to welcome all of you for this technical talk series on AI and ML and core engineering. So it's a series three event. So in this particular topic, we are going to discuss basically on electrical and electronics engineering domain. So a special welcome to all the panel guest speakers of today. So starting from Mr. Jagan Minson, founder and CEO, Bootscap, Dr. Srijit Yes, Assistant Professor, Department of Electrical Engineering, NIT Silchar, Dr. Sudarshan Santiappan, Chief Scientific Engineer, Buddhi AI, uh, Mr. V. S. Srijaja Balaguru, Assistant Executive Engineer, Non-Conventional Energy Sources, TNB, Mr. S. Sendil Kumar, Assistant Executive Engineer, Load Dispatch, SLDC, Tamil Nadu Transmission Corporation Limited, Dr. J. Balamurugan, Assistant Executive Engineer, TNEB, Thank and go. So thanks for accepting our invitation. Welcome all of you. So I welcome Dr. S. Clouding, coordinator of this mega technical talk show, IET members and participants, staffs, and my dear students. So welcome to this mega technical talk event show. So until no further wait, let us start this event. So over to Maladi. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If you had all the world's information directly attached to your brain or artificial brain that was smarter than your brain, you would be better off, said by Serge Brin. Machine learning and electrical engineering professionals leverage AI to build an optimized system and also provide AI technology with a new data input for interpretation. In today's world, AI and ML are entering into many fields and reducing the work power of humans. In today's session, we will get to know about intelligent energy distribution grids, intervention of AI in power system operations, AI for energy storage in battery, AI for electric vehicles, artificial intelligence and renewable energy with AMR, AMI solution in detail. Let me introduce Dr. J. Balamurigan, Assistant Executive Engineer, TNB, Tangent Co., the moderator of this session. He has 20 plus years of experience in this domain of electrical engineering and expertise in installation, administration, and maintenance of various networking systems. Experience in the fields of generation, transmission, distribution, ranging from 110 megawatt to 660 megawatt generators, 230 or 400 kilowatt high tension lines, 230 kilowatt indoor gas insulators, which give outdoor substation, and heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, HV, AC operations and maintenance, IoT, AMR, smart metering process. His passion for research is to find optimal solution for power system problems in AI, machine learning, 
and he equally passionate in serving society by joining helping hands to charities and creating way awareness among common public energy conservation campaigns he also works in scientific innovation and aiding people with technology solution for today ailing issues through atm trust fulfilling the needs of many orphanages and skill development programs for the drifter society of their supervisor has said and like this he is a elected committee member of institution of engineers india tamil nadu state center welcome sir thank you ma'am and let me introduce mr jagan vincent founder and ceo bootcap he is a, has two decades of it experience working for major corporates like ibm ubs orb com star trek but over 10 plus years of experience in solid understanding and implementation experience in telemetry m to m and iot verticals architecture designed and implemented over a dozen of complex challenging and demanding industry standard robust applications and servers he has 20 plus years of experience in c c++ java right from its alpha versions and broad knowledge in almost all networking protocols ever needed for building m to m iot application services corporate strategy and development specialist characterized as a visionary strategist and technician consistent record for delivering extraordinary results in growth revenue operational performance and profitability heavy transaction background including startup financing and leading the board In today's session, he will be explaining about the intelligent energy distribution grid. Welcome, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Now I'm handing over to Janani. Thank you, Malathi. Let me introduce Engineer V. S. Sri Raja Balaguru, Assistant Executive Engineer, Non-Conventional Energy Sources (TNEV). He has 20 plus years of experience in academia and industry. Vast experience in tangent co in various fields, monitoring and capturing of real-time smart meter data from the remote end of all renewable energy sources like solar, wind, and Tamil Nadu. Online billing and forecasting. He is a member of Institution Engineering and Technology and also a member of Institution of Engineers. In today's session, he will be explaining about artificial intelligence in renewable energy with AMR AMI solutions in detail. Welcome, sir. Let me introduce Dr. Yes Sriyujit, Assistant Professor, Department of Electrical Engineering, National Institute of Technology, Silchar. He has 16 years of teaching and research experience. He has published more than 50 papers in referred international journals and conferences. He is a reviewer in IEEE, IET, Elsevier, Taylor and Francis Springer, and a lot of other journals. He is serving as editorial member in few journals. He has given a number of lectures and hands-on training on power electronics, power systems, drives, packs, and HVDC smart grid. He is a member in board of studies in various institutions. His areas of interest are power electronics, power systems, renewable energy sources, drives, smart grid, optimization techniques, packs, and HVDC electric vehicles. In today's session, he will be explaining about AI in electric vehicles in detail. Welcome, sir. Now I'm Thank handing you, over the session to Preeti. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Janani. Let me introduce Engineer S. Sendhil Kumar, Assistant Executive Engineer, Lord Dispatch, SLDC Tamil Nadu, Transmission Corporation Limited, Tamil Nadu State. He has 21 plus years of experience in scheduling of renewable energy in real-time grid operation from State Load Dispatch Center. He handles the operation of State Grid with Merit Order Dispatch Principle. He is responsible for dispatching of generation and balancing the hydro, thermal, gas, and central generating stations to meet the state demand in an economic manner. He is experienced in utilization of hydro power plant in an economic way to maintain the system stability, condition, and operation during morning, lightning, lighting peak, harsh, and critical conditions, and contributed towards state energy accounting and deviation settlement mechanism towards energy schedule under. interstate expertise in sharing of transmission charges calculation and reactive power calculation he also handled connectivity open access approvals to the various generators and consumers according to the indian indian electricity laws in force his area of interest are grid management power system planning analysis integration of renewable energy 
he has also participated in integration of renewable energy study trip to journey in today's session he will be explaining about ai explaining about interve- intervention of ai in power system operations welcome sir madam thank you uh, next let me introduce dr s sudarshan chief scientific officer buddy ai he has 20 plus years of invaluable experience in leading AI research and development projects for an end to end artificially intelligent product development system software design and development in assignments assignments and reputations adroit in managing the AI research and product development life cycle from concept, conceptualization finalizing of product specifications technology selection client handling change request management and cross functional coordination for effective positioning of product he is highly capable of acting as an owner of multiple products and giving expert opinions to the organization clients with respect to the competition possesses strong analytical and method ma- mathematical problem solving and troubleshooting skills and industry academia joint research facilitator with experience of successful executing several research products with premier academic research institutes in today's session he will be explaining about ai for energy storage in batteries in detail welcome sir thank you now hand now i'm handing over to malati thank you yes ma'am so thank you so much and wonderful uh, uh, introduction by all these cute angels and uh, i could see that uh, all these experienced professionals are from different industries uh, varied from uh, uh, a startup company so who has said a uh, lot of startup companies and uh, who is also the ceo of the company so jagan sir and uh, we have people from uh, tamil nadu electricity generation so they are have an experience of uh, 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 handling the Uh, transmission distribution as well as the generation so which is the primary part of uh, any energy system so we also see that uh, uh, a research so what is the asking rate of the industry and how it can be bridged with the budding engineers so we also have students are from a research uh, scholar and uh, uh, and uh, uh, who has guided more than 50 uh, to 100 uh, uh, people in uh, research area and he is also presented in uh, uh various uh, international uh, journals and he is also editor for lot of uh, uh, uh journals so that mean to say that uh, he has a overall experience in uh, publishing that uh, standards uh, to uh, the asking rate of the industry so uh, that is uh, one part and stay and how this industry can be integrated with artificial intelligence so we have the most experienced personality sudarshan sir so who will bridge the gap between what is the asking rate of the industry and how it can be connected and the researches can be bridged to the industry to make it more automated and how this electrical engineering would be uh, seamlessly integrated with uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning in core engineering the first thing is that uh, we are all engineers we are connected today by uh, institution of electrical and uh, 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 that is engineering and technology so iit so which is from uk so we have a bonding because we work for engineering community and we nurture the engineers and we also make sure that the asking rate of the industry is been governed by the budding engineers through research and technology so now we would have a, a light on each and every area so starting from how the industry need to be integrated and uh, how the industry was in the past and uh, what is the uh, breakthrough in the in, in this industrial revolution 4.0 and how the integration can be seamlessly integrated through this uh, 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 artificial intelligence that part would be dealt by our uh, industrial expertise jagan sir welcome you sir so please throw light on uh, uh, your experience so he has uh, guided and uh, he has uh, molded 25 startups more than 25 startups and he has a rich experience of how to start a company so we will have more information from him and uh, please sir welcome you sir thank you sir uh, first of all thank you so much for this opportunity given by kcc college of engineering and iit i sincerely honored i'm i'm honored and let me share my screen and uh, one second share screen Stop. 
I hope uh, screen is visible, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So it's only a short duration, five minutes. And, uh, you know, given a, such a huge topic is going to be a difficult challenge. But let me limit with, you know, a few of the highlights. So what is intelligent energy distribution grids? And uh, before jumping into the AI or ML part of it, uh, let's have a you know, look back or you know, look out of what is happening right now. So as a global trend, 4.6 to 6.5 percentage of energy is being required, increased uh, globally year by year. And um, how are this distribution happening right now uh, through this, all these you know, power grids? Uh, if I understand you right, I mean, there is no disgrace for the current uh, TNEB industry because you now my mom used to work for 37 years in the TNEB and uh, I've had you know, all kind of experience you people have as well. So I understand it's very, very laborious and ad hoc. You know, people used to you know, uh, work day and night, a lineman and a, and a technician while we merrily sleep in the rain at home. So uh, how... Artificial intelligence can, uh, you know, play a role in distribution. We'll come to that point, and finally come to conception of the electricity. There is a, you know, lethargic effort, a lethargic mindset people have developed. You know, just because we can afford it, it doesn't mean that you can consume whatever you wanted. Uh, just like air, energy is also should be used with caution, and people doesn't have guilt nowadays. You know, when I was a kid, uh, my home used to have one ceiling fan or two lights or one veranda with you know a 20 watt or 30 watt bulb that's all and uh, we get beatings you know if we turn on the fan for no reasons so now look at my home you know i i have you know three air conditioners running and my kids don't even care bother to off the light or the tv i mean a can play a great role here making the people awareness as well so let's jump to the next slide so what tomorrow would be if you don't care so before we jump to the you know the the real crisis uh, it's going to know, as of now, the last 25 years, one percentage hiked every year. We are standing at 6.52, close to 9 percentage of demand being increased every year. Now, this spike is going to completely, um, you know, uh, occupy, meaning, you know, invention of electronic vehicles, drones and smart applications in the next 10 years uh, is going to heavily impact on uh, the way we are going to consume the electricity. So you the Beecham or Gartner is predicting there would be a 100 to 125 percentage uh, hike. For an instance, as of now, if I'm right, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, uh, I quickly uh, did a search. 300 gigs of gigawatt of, uh, I mean, 388 gigawatt is our total national capacity right now. Imagine yes, we, we, go to, we are going to, we are going to, you know, hit by 900 to 950 gigawatt by, by around mid of 2040. That's what the prediction says. It's a steep number. So production cost, distribution cost, consumption cost, so many things. How the impact is going to severely affect the global warming, food production, natural calamities. Butterfly effect, right? You know, you hit some, some place with you know, something and you would never know what is going to happen on the other side. Uh, things are getting extinct. So uh, smart distribution. Uh, I just have only one minute. Let me you know, uh, shrink it down. Smart distribution, A, can play a vital role. Imagine, just like weather service, if the energy consumption and distribution can, can be um, made as a public API or something like that, we could add a lot of intelligence to the home and industry appliances. Uh, Off-peak usage credits, the government or the agencies can come up with off-peak usage credits. Whoever use their power by uh, non-demand times, you know, they may get a you know, reduced bill and spread, obviously spreading awareness. Imagine you drive a car and uh, when the fuel is about to run out, it gets a warning, right? That gives you a caution that I have to, you know, turn off the AC. If you are in the middle of a highway, you turn off the AC and drive slowly and reach a patrol bunk, right? Similarly, you know, uh, your mobile you know, institution or uh, your TV broadcasting saying that, hey, your, your home consumption is too much or something like that will make the users more aware of the energy con being consumed. Uh, so this is a broader spectrum, and I, 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 I see the next set of speakers is going to deep dive, uh, especially Dr. Sudarshan is going to completely cover some of these areas. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah. Yes, sir. So thank you so much. It was a 
wonderful uh, research that has been done so uh, it is all about the energy because uh, it is a universal source when we started uh, uh, the fire or the revolutions which started uh, now we came to an energy so it is universal and everyone is utilizing and the kids doesn't know where it comes from and uh, why we need to save it it is because of uh, this raining of uh, other lightings and other things uh, that has been more brighter but we do not know what is the cause for the heavy rain or thunderstorm it is about the global warming you, you touch the positive as well as negatives of utilization of energy and why there is a need that the intelligence need to be integrated with the system and so that uh, uh, this electrical energy is beneficially it is been uh, distributed all to the people so like say there is a, there is a, always a slide which says that uh, more than 26000 kilowatt of energy is been utilized by america which has a very uh, limited population say 5% of the world's population it utilizes 26000 kilowatt but uh, a normal indian or uh, a public so more than 20 billion people doesn't have access to electricity is that in that case so conservation is the first part of the pyramid means we need to adopt the technology in between to make sure that all the people are enjoying that energy and the 100 units which has been given as a free it is for the people who are deprived and we need to ensure that we are utilizing within that limit and we need to integrate some artificial intelligence so that the intelligence is conserving a lot and giving back to the society wonderful sir so hats off to you so throwing light on certain areas which need to be uh, uh, enhanced with the artificial intelligence so we can have uh, uh, the words from uh, the next speaker so please sir so we, we welcome the next speaker so uh, sri rajabalaguru sir please sir do you have any slides to share Sir, you are in mute. You may have done. I have. So, shall I share my uh, screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, so thank you for this uh, opportunity uh, for the KCG Engineering College and uh, Dr. Bala for giving this wonderful opportunity. Uh, so here uh, I'm going to explain about this uh, artificial intelligence in the renewable energy with AMR and AMI solution. So here in Tanjirko. Uh, my experience, experience I'm sharing, few experience I'm sharing here. So renewable generators like a wind and solar uh, across Tamil Nadu. So we implemented this project AMR initially for building one. Uh, only for, because online building. So because normally every person we have to, uh, we have to, uh, the person should go there and uh, they have to take the reading. It's a manual reading and that prone to error. So to avoid this, we started this project for the renewable energy generators to bring this online building. And later on, this project we implemented for the forecasting and scheduling of the renewable energy. Because as you know, the government are marching towards the target of 175 gigawatt by the year 2022. So seven rich renewable energy states in India. So one among them, Tamil Nadu. So we have a renewable energy management center in Tamil Nadu. So in Chennai. So it's a part of a LD center, state, state load dispatch center. This REMC, they are forecasting the renewable energy, uh, the predominant renewable energy, as you know, the wind and solar. Uh, this one is the inform power. So for this, we, we, we uh, implemented this AMR and AMI project. So, as this, this is your uh, wind turbine, so, uh, which is located in various places uh, across Tamil Nadu. So, we have four wind pass locations in Tamil Nadu um, Arulvai Mari Pass, Shimbata Pass, uh, uh, Kambam Pass, and um, Palakkad Pass. 
so we have abundance of wind power so we are the pioneers tamil nadu the pioneer in uh, uh, in a wind uh, power generation uh, so all these uh, generators are connected with a smart meter so this smart meter which connects to your uh, communication network we can go for any communication network but we uh, we we, uh, in, uh, we implemented the project with a gpl that that, that is the, your normal gsm system through that so you can go for vsat you can go for a, a, a that means uh, i'm talking about the wireless communication wired communication also you can go with the opgw network so we implemented this project and uh, you know what is amr so the collection of data uh, onto the central database uh, we have a hidden server located at the tangentco headquarters so from the remote far end uh, uh, tani or kambam or kanyakumari district so where we have a different uh, in the different areas we have a wind generators all these data will be collected here and uh, ami so it's a two way communication where uh, the data that's what uh, the data which is stored with a particular time so you can get the time uh, for example in the meter so you have a meter energy meter and the meter interfacing unit and communication network through this mdas server so mdas is meter data acquisition server so data will be all pulled onto this server so what is this the data is different types of data for example for one particular month we are taking the data is called as the billing data and if you want a weekend week uh, weekday uh, for forecasting of the weekend schedule you can go for the weekend data and day head schedule for the day data and even now we are going for the load survey data of 15 minutes block uh this 15 minutes block you can the accuracy of this uh, data will be very useful for the scheduling and the forecasting of the uh, renewable power so uh, normally uh, for a forecasting uh, we we uh, we implemented for uh, uh, this uh, project for uh, remc uh, we'll take for the from the sim meter uh, special energy meter and from the various cooling substation these meters are uh, installed so from that the data we are getting and for that we are using the artificial intelligence uh, to bringing this uh, 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 your forecasting your good accuracy of forecasting so they had forecasting as well as the interday forecasting so everything we will get the data through this so this is the basic about the uh, gsm com based communication so you have a energy meter energy meter and the miu the meter interfacing unit this is located in the far end and from that you have a, a gsm provider the so bsnl atel or vodafone whatever it may be so through this the mdas server will be all the data will be pulled onto the mdas server and from the database you can go for the application software so this is what about this uh, technology and uh, you can see this is the cooling substation cooling substation means we have different types of substation the distribution substation cooling substation means the generator itself own their own substation as per the electricity act the 101 of section a generator can own and maintain the substation so we have uh, uh, nearly about 24 20, 24 substations here in the cooling substation all these substations the data will be pulled down to that from that data the solar or wind will be pulled down to the uh, mdas server so you can go for the load dispatch center so your load dispatch center can view the data for the forecasting or scheduling or deviation settlement mechanism this data is very useful so here apart from that we have a vsat technology with vsat technology we can go so any any technology that i said earlier you can go for rf gsm or vsat so these are all wireless technology uh, particularly the problems what we are facing here uh, in this wireless communication is uh, in the areas of tani uh, kambam and arvanmuri so some areas we uh, we won't have get the uh, particular uh, good signal strength so in that area Uh, we have to implement this technology so yet to implement this one we that and all and uh, this one so this is basically uh, about this one and this is your uh, uh, app uh, you can go for a erp solutions also with this uh, smart meeting solution you have a meter and mdas and similarly you can go for the real time application grid management outage management uh, gis cis whatever you can go with this so once the meter means you have you can connect with the data and you can share the data to any application means that you can go for the real time application for the for the consumer the so real time pricing they know what is the real because uh, after month only after by month only you know what is the billing uh, uh, what amount i have to pay to uh, to the state electricity board 
So these things and all, in order to avoid that one, we can go for the real time pricing, the RTP. So this, all these things are possible with the help of this uh, in today's technology, the DLMS meter, uh, the DLMS protocol. So, uh, so all these things are supported here. And this is the data, how we are getting, this is the slot data actually. Uh, we have five slots of data, the active power, reactive power, everything we can get here. And uh, with this data, we are using a forecasting of uh, 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 renewable energy. So statical, so as you know, the forecasting technique, the statical, uh, this one is time series data and the artificial intelligence using a neural network and the fuzzy logic and the combination of these two, we are using this one. So this, these techniques we are using to bring, uh, to simulate and bring a, a very good result uh, to, that is the accuracy uh, is good uh, by using this one. And this is the uh, detailed flow of the system. So where, as you know, this is your infirm power. When you when you say in infirm power, automatically not only the data, it depends upon not only the data, it also depends upon the weather condition, other parameters, humidity, temperature, wind power density, wind speed, everything is different. And the, if you take a solar irradiation, everything is different. So we have to take all the data and uh, uh, through the uh, neural network model, we are planning, uh, we are, we are uh, simulating the data to get the uh, accurate results. Two things we have to do. One is um, uh, your uh, data should be, the day head and the intraday should be matched almost. So this is the detail A in model. With the, as I said earlier, the air temperature, wind speed, radiation, everything we have controlled through the A in and artificial neural network. And thank you. Uh, so uh, with this, I'll... Uh, 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 thank you. Thank you for everything, uh, everybody. So, thank yes, you. Sir. Yeah. Thank you, Sri Raju Balaguru, sir. So, it was a wonderful insight of the technology where uh, uh, this renewable energy, the pyramid, energy pyramid says that uh, the primary thing is about the energy conservation. So, that was touched by Jagan, sir. Uh, uh, and now we have an enlightenment on this area where AMR and AMI, the artificial intelligence, where an engineer need to work on is how this integration, seamless integration can be done means the asking rate of the industry is that how the reading, the manual reading can be automated. So that is the main part we need to categorize and how things need to be done for a unified metering process where the billing, everything seems to be very smart today. And uh, people need to have a reading of uh, instantaneous, even if it is not integrated with the generators. Uh, so what uh, people are going to do, so we do not know. So like uh, Electricity Act 2020 uh, emphasis on uh, any meter which is to be replaced should be of uh, uh, smart metering. So in that case, uh, so people would be coming up uh, with uh, that particular area means uh, the research need to be done on certain areas means uh, the researches uh, are done and uh, what is the research going on? Wow, what is the asking rate of the industry? What the people are doing here? So that would be dealt by uh, our Srijit uh, by next speaker. So welcome you, sir. So welcome, Srijit, sir. So please throw light on uh, the research areas. Uh, Balaguru, sir, could you please uh, 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 stop your uh, slide sharing? Thank you. So Srijit, sir, so over to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think it's echo is coming from somewhere. Oh, it's done. Okay, uh, very good evening to all, and uh, thank you for this opportunity. So I'm uh, here to talk a few words on the application of artificial intelligence in uh, electric vehicles. As you know, this is one uh, theme which is uh, coming up nowadays. It's, it's a area of where things, a lot of things are coming up. And it's already clear that by 2030, in our country, around 30% of the vehicles which are running on the road will be electric vehicles. And this is for our country. The same case is there with all other countries also, maybe the percentage is more. So soon we can see that more number of electric vehicles are running on the road. And another thing is that if you see electric vehicles, the research which is going on inside electric vehicle is not restricted to any particular stream. There are a lot of scope for people from electrical engineering, people from control, people from power, communication, a lot of communication is there inside, computer science, mechanical, all those streams have a lot of opportunities to work inside electric vehicle. And it's already told that AI is going to rule the world in future. And obviously electric vehicle is going to rule the road in the future. And if you mix these two, we can see we can do a lot of waters. And a lot of things have been done now. Best example is the autonomous car from Tesla. 
So if you see electric vehicle, the each and every thing, that means A to Z application inside the electric vehicles, you can incorporate AI inside. So let me throw a few applications where uh, we can incorporate AI. The first thing we can tell is about the charging, charging of electric vehicles. And as we all know, right, we are going, we are having a lot of technical advancements that initially the charging was taking around three to four hours. Not, now it came down to 80 minutes or something with fast charging and all. This AI has a very, very big role to play on this. So for example, if I'm driving in a highway, okay? So the, the, just assume that if there is a, some option to show that this much battery percentage you are having, and you're having a charging station near uh, just 20 kilometers apart. Uh, that is usual. But then think of a condition where you can get the information that in that charging station, around 20 vehicles are there. They are having this much capacity. And if you go to that charging station, you need to wait for around 10 to 15 minutes to charge the vehicle. If you can get such an information, it will be much useful for the driver. So and some other information like if you go to the next station, this station you take 10 minutes waiting time, next station you need to wait for five minutes only. So we can get a lot of information like such that we can uh, take a decision of our own. And another thing with respect to this uh, charging is that, see, as far as our grid is concerned, normally uh, the tariff is different. During off-peak hours, the tariff is different. During peak hours, the tariff is different. Okay, so when you're charging your vehicle during, if a time of the tariff is there, if we are charging your vehicle during off-peak times, obviously the price will be less and the demand on the grid will also be less because it's not overloaded. Whereas when you're trying to uh, uh, charge your vehicle during the peak demand period, then obviously the grid will be loaded and if time of the tariff is there, then you need to pay more. So by, with you, by using the AI technology, there are a lot of opportunities to know what is the tariff and these mechanisms will tell you now the tariff is this much. If you are charging your vehicle at this time, you need to pay this much. Just wait for this much time, charge it another slot so that you need to pay you less. So if such kind of things are there, it is surely beneficial to the utility as well as to the customers who are having the vehicle. So all these charging applications, already a lot of AI has been implemented in that. And now also a lot of research is going on in this. And if you see the next one as a battery technology, because battery is a very integral part of an electric vehicle. Around 60% or 50 to 60% of the cost of an electric vehicle is going on batteries. Right. So the thing is that uh, earlier it was with uh, lithium ion batteries. Now a lot of uh, researches are going on in uh, sodium ion batteries. All such things are there. A lot of AI techniques are implement, in, implemented inside that for the optimal design of a battery. So that is one area where AI is playing a very big role. One more thing we can tell is about the renewable energy sources. Right? If you're going for electric vehicles, if I'm simply charging from the grid, obviously it's same as using the fossil fuel. Rather than emitting, uh, rather than, uh, re, uh, emitting carbon in my vehicle, it's actually emitted in the power station. So more and more renewable energy sources has to be incorporated into the grid. That is fine. How to relate this with the electric vehicles? As you know, we can easily forecast. We, it's easy to forecast the power which is generated by the renewable energy sources and the charging has to be done according to that such that more and more renewable energy sources can be integrated into the grid and you can make your vehicle charged by using renewable energy sources. So that is another area where lots of uh, AI techniques are used. And one more best example I can tell you is the autonomous vehicles from Tesla. Right. It's all everyone knows about that, right? That is actually a vehicle which is without driver. And you can see a lot of research is going on in this area where they can sense a lot of sensors, cameras, all such things are there. And all the information from these vehicles are, are taken and they are using deep learning, machine learning. Then all these techniques are used and they are finally making the car autonomous. So there also AI techniques have been implemented. So like this, for each and every technique, each and every applications inside the electric vehicle needs artificial intelligence. And this is a very good area of work, both for working as well as for researchers. Okay. So now it's clear that this is one area which is open for you, where you can apply a lot of artificial intelligence that, and it doesn't mean that it's not started, it's already started and it's going on. And it's clear that this the era of electric vehicles will go for a very long time. So it's clear that it's a very good option for you to work and do research. Thank you.
sir. Uh, thank you so much, Sridhar sir. So you have given a great insight on uh, how uh, these electric vehicles, it's a boon and a talk of the town. So starting from Tesla, so you said that autonomous vehicle and drones and other things are coming up. And uh, right now there is a need for artificial intelligence where we can charge and uh, the time of the meter where uh, the cheaper charging can be done with uh, artificial intelligence. That's area where uh, all the engineers need to work on where because uh, every everyone is in the faster world and they want to drive fast to eat fast and uh, sleep fast so that's what happening so so in that case uh, if it is going to be cheaper so we can book a tesla or uh, it is going to be uh, hyundai kona so whatever things it is going to be there and uh, apart from that the charging of the battery is very much important and uh, we electricity board we have a lot of problems so uh, there is a saying in uh, a Tamil film, it says that uh, uh, if a uh, five pesa uh, 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 stealing is a problem, means a five pesa uh, sto stolen for five, five lakh people, and uh, five lakh times is uh, it is a, a very big problem. In that case, everyone is going to charge in their home. What could be the problem? Means it is a grid. It, uh, the grid is going to collapse. It's the green corridor or it's going to the black corridor. Whatever things which is being done means uh, the electricity board has a great headache. In that uh, headache need to be broken means the LDC people, so the low dispatch people yeah, need to accommodate the balance between the generator and the distribution uh, circle. And in that case, uh, what intelligence being embodied in the existing scenario and uh, how artificial intelligence can add value to the low dispatch center, we can uh, get an insight from uh, uh, Sendil Kumar sir. So welcome uh, engineer Sendil Kumar sir. So throw light on that particular area. Welcome thank you, Jay. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for giving me the wonderful opportunity to me, uh, KCG College Technology and IAT Technology. Thank you, sir. Before I'm starting, I'm uh, starting about the a, a intervention of A in power system operations. That's thing. A continuous and reliable supply of electricity is necessary for the functioning of today's modern and advanced society. Since the early to mid-1980s, most of the effort in power systems analysis has turned away from the methodology of formal mathematical modeling, which came from the areas of operations research, control theory, and numerical analysis to the less rigorous and less tedious techniques of artificial intelligence. Power systems keep on increasing on the basis of geographical regions, asset additions, and introduction of new technologies in generation, transmission, and distribution of electricity. Artificial intelligence techniques have become popular for solving different problems in power systems like control, planning, scheduling, forecast. These techniques can deal, deal with difficult tasks faced by applications in modern large power systems with even more interconnections installed to meet increasing load demand. The application of the techniques has been successful in many areas of power systems engineering. So that's why I want to, why these things are, why we are going to implement the artificial intelligence in state load dispatch center connected with that generation, transmission, distribution. The state load dispatch center is a major role, play, play the role is the only thing, balancing the gender, demand and the generation. Suppose in case we are not going to balancing the generation demand, the frequency, uh, demand increasing frequency, uh, down. And if, uh, generation increasing, frequency going to high. So we are going to balancing that generation and demand. So how much generation? Previously, in 1911, uh, only first generator plant started in Kolkata. And then only by parallel, 111 years is coming. Of, uh, just just one 111 year only, we are generating a lot of developments. Initially, we started through fuel, hydro, hydro generation, and coal generator, and then on steam generator, and a lot of things are coming. And now we are going to introduce solar, wind, battery, and uh, tidal, and so many things we are introducing. So, low, so many technologies are introduced in the generation part. In distribution part, what's initially 6.6 .6 kV? Only now we come to uh, up to 1200 kilo uh, volt volt transmission line. So, how it is possible to manage everything? Previously, there is no system through phone call only, 
contact that person and what's the generation, pick up the generation, raising the generation, everything through phone call only. Now, after the development through SCADA, supervisory control and data acquisition system, where we get all the data, get the, from the station through remotely, through RTO, remote terminal unit, where we get all, the, all this data. With the, every 25 samples per minute only, we're getting this data through RTO. Now, with uh, development, Fisher measurement unit that will get every second 40 samples. So every second we get 40 samples. And how we are going to able to manage? Easily we have to manage the generation and demand balance. Day. And one more thing, the transmission system. Initially, very minimum transmission line only. Now it is totally in India, more than 2 lakh kilometers of transmission lines are there. And our Tamil Nadu itself have here 300 transmission lines and more than 15,000 kilometer and 400, uh, 400 kV uh, lines also having the more than 150 lines and the 15,000 kilo, 5,000 kilometer to 8,000 kilometers are there. And 110 kV, 1,000 substations. So is it possible to manage everything in a, in a single minute? Yes. Manually, it is not possible. Mechanically, it is not possible through system and interfacing the artificial intelligence. We have want to. We are going already. We are introduced. So in advancedly, we are going moving forward. So that's why right now we are implementing lot of technology, facial measurement, data measurement, statcom devices for controlling the devices. A lot of things are introduced and by managing the grid without any interruption to the consumers. So that's why you're managing in Paka manner and in hydro storage is during utilizing on only peak hour period only. That we are not going to utilizing on the uh, off peak period. I already have some persons are discussed about the peak period and off peak period. You know, actually our per day 24 hours divided into four per, per hour four blocks. Four blocks. So four, four blocks means 96 blocks per, per day. So 96 blocks each and every second, our state load dispatch center has to vigorously watch the and monitor that uh, screen and balancing the generation. So that is a uh, previously it is tedious. Now it is easily we are managing. Uh, wherever, wherever you sit that. So now I am sitting in the home. It is not possible to manage the grid. It is possible. Because why? Because lot of development through IoT, internet operation of things and uh, and artificial intelligence technique and machine learning things or a lot of things are developed and implemented things. So that's why it is it is easily to manage the grid. So water, so water station, what hydro stations are located in somewhere, somewhere remote places. That station also in 2000, in my first uh, appointment in the hydro power station, that power station only the first through remotely operated station. Kunda Power 6, that Parsons Valley. I, I'm sitting in Chennai or abroad also possible to that start the generator and uh, switch off the uh, switch off the generator. That is possible. So it is possible. Why? How it is possible? Through artificial intelligence, a lot of developments are implemented and development in forecast. Renewable is a infim power only. It is not sustained power. Sometimes uh, morning it will come pick up, rising higher and uh, within a fraction of a second it will reduce. In the same thing, solar. Solar is also only during daytime only available. And after the daytime, suddenly it will reduce. Suppose in clouds moving on the time immediately, the generation is also reduced. On the time, how we are going to manage and balancing the generation? So that's why it is also difficult. So that's why we are going by implementing the artificial intelligence. Easily we are going to monitor and manage. Already one of my friend colleague Balgur Balgur is also mentioned the AMR and AMI things also. That's uh, that thing also we are able, we are utilizing in the state load dispatch center for the renewable energy management center. They have to continuously 24 hours for monitoring that. Thing and they have given the scheduling and forecasting and the operations research side also utilized. So that's why uh, I strongly recommend and all the lot of opportunities are available in the state load dispatch center to do the improvement or uh, necessary because uh, uh, renewable sector side is lot of things are there. We want to do the youngsters coming forward to work on that artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Sindhil, sir. So uh, now we have a clear-cut idea that there is a need and uh, uh, it is uh, uh, the asking rate is also very high for all the engineers to clo closely integrated uh, with the technology. So the binding area is artificial intelligence, but uh, uh, what we need to do, so because uh, 
it's something like it's starting from uh, sir jagan sir so he was telling right uh, uh, the demand is rising like uh, uh, 900 gigawatt of energy so it is a generation part and uh, uh, coming down to uh, uh, sri raja balaguru sir so he was talking about the renewable energy so renewable energy is also booming like anything and uh, but it is uh, it is not uh, a continuous thing so generation would be there Uh, but it would disappear suddenly so 3000 megawatt would be the generation and it would suddenly disappear to zero means how the continuity can be done so in that case a smartness is been uh, needed and uh, it need to be integrated so the second part the third part is that uh, we are moving towards the global warming so global warming is a threat and uh, we need to move towards uh, the transportation sector so electric vehicle is mandatory that it need to be integrated means uh, where the power can be introduced it is not that the smooth transition can be done all the vehicles need to be suddenly stopped uh, like that of delhi means uh, the transportation itself it's a problem in that case uh, we need to move from uh, the normal uh, fuels uh, fuels to uh, the electric vehicles means uh, the load what we have is a uh, very high 900 uh, gigawatt and in case if it is going to be added then again it's a problem so that's where the ldc people also have lot of trouble because uh, it is uh, forecasting is done uh, like uh, what uh, people used to say so uh, raise your four finger if it uh, if it is uh, right means it is that uh, 200 megawatt added to it uh, 20% of that uh, that is the thing real time uh, 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 that is forecasting is not been done or uh, it is not been integrated because all the demand and the generation need to be integrated seamlessly in order to maintain it it's not alone the scared of the supervisory is not alone in the uh, the intelligence to be added up it is the artificial intelligence the real time that it is automatically a genie like uh, uh, a uh, artificial intelligence agent is working on he or she tells about what is the demand right away and what we need to do so all this can be integrated only by a artificial intelligence agent who has a vast experience of it so we can hear from sudarshan sir who has a very good experience of implementing artificial intelligence in uh, medical field so and he has also done much of his research on this electric area so we can listen from sudarshan sir please sir welcome you sir sure uh, thank you so is my screen visible yes sir perfect okay so the next 5 minutes i'm going to spend on uh, what is the scope of applying artificial intelligence towards storage in batteries so people talked about um, generation of power distribution of power and consumption of power the three stages um so in the middle we have to also look into uh, the idea of you know how to store energy when energy is not being generated right now right uh, so it's a problem so uh, right now we are all connected to uh, generators uh, which which work 24 by 7 and the consumption is also 24 by 7 but uh, if you look at uh, non conventional energy uh, sources like such as uh, uh, renewable energy sources the generation is not continuous uh, the generation uh, depends greatly on the availability of uh, the free energy <laughs> we call it that way um, and it is intermittent it is not continuous so uh, it makes sense to store that energy and then use it when the energy is not available so it becomes absolutely necessary to study uh, the performance of how energy can be stored efficiently in batteries right so so batteries if you take uh, there are a variety of batteries that we come across um, and uh, some of the parameters of the batteries we should understand the first parameter that we will look at is the chemistry of the batteries so the popular popular ones are lead acid lithium ion uh, lifepo batteries and uh, lithium polymer batteries so you guys my everyone would have uh, known about lead acid batteries the ones that we use uh, in uh, uh, in our motorcycles and in in our inverters uh, so those are lead acid batteries right um, and uh, the the next very very popular uh, battery chemistry is lithium ion uh, that runs in your mobile phone in your laptops electric vehicles all of these are lithium ion uh, the more recent uh, chemistry which is becoming popular is lifepo batteries which i am using in my home uh, for my inverter uh, power supply or my solar pcu uh, i use it that a, a lot and lipo is a very interesting uh, chemistry which is predominantly used for uh, toys because um, lipo batteries can discharge very very fast uh, so it can discharge at 20 times the capacity or 50 times the capacity so predominantly lipo batteries are used in uh, Uh, electric toys or remote control toys 
So the next uh, uh, parameter of battery is the battery voltage, which is very easy to understand. The next thing is AH rating, which is the amperage, how much current uh, these batteries can supply. And um, the next one is, uh, what is the internal resistance of the battery? This, this means a lot, because if the internal resistance of the battery is higher, then the batteries are inherently inefficient. So uh, the modern chemistry, uh, the battery chemistries are all having a very fantastic uh, internal resistance. Um, uh, the, all the lithium versions, uh, all the alkaline met, uh, metal-based uh, batteries uh, have phenomenal internal resistance. Uh, it's actually increasing the efficiency. Then uh, the next important parameter of the battery is the self-discharge rate. I mean, how do batteries discharge themselves? The worst of the above four chemistries, the lead-acid lead battery, it discharges very bad. I mean, in the sense, uh, if you leave it untouched for, let's say, 10 days, it discharges itself fully. And uh, this is why uh, people introduce the concept of float charging. Uh, float charging does not apply to lithium chemistry batteries. They work, their, their discharge is very small. And um, then the most important thing next is the state of charge curve. So what is the shape of the state of charge? And uh, the finally, the C rating. So people overlook this. Uh, many of the fellows who think they are very knowledgeable with respect to batteries forget to look at the C rating. People only look at the AH rating, but C rating is more important than the AH rating because that decides the fate of the battery. So all these are parameters uh, and we are trying to uh, work with the, these parameters so as to improve the efficiency of the batteries. So what is the problem that we are looking at? So we are looking at the problem of fast, fast charging because people don't have patience. They don't want to wait for 10 hours to charge a battery in full. So people only look at 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes time to get at least 80% of the charging. So most of uh, the batteries used in the electric vehicles are powered by the lithium ion chemistry, uh, which has a very nice uh, fast charging property. And uh, But lithium ion is equally uh, dangerous. Uh, it is equivalent to, a, what to say, uh, it's a bomb you are carrying at the belly of your car. Uh, because uh, lithium ion batteries are very sensitive to mechanical damages, they are very sensitive to short circuit, they are very sensitive to temperature profile, and uh, essentially lithium ion is equal to a bomb. But uh, the, the variation of lithium ion, which is uh, the LIFO batteries, have very similar properties to lithium ion, but they are very cool in the sense, even if you break the battery into two, the worst thing that you get is some leakage uh, of the uh, chemicals present in the battery. Even if you short circuit lithium, uh, the life core batteries, there is no fire. So life core batteries are the future, I would say. Maybe in the, in the near future, EVs will move to life core batteries from lithium ion. Lithium ion is very, very dangerous. I mean, I, I will never buy an electric vehicle if it is having lithium ion batteries in it. Um, so fast charging is the problem that we're trying to solve here. And we want, uh, we want uh, the charging to be very fast, like the way we refuel our automobile, right? So when we fill our tank, we, we get 100% uh, of the capacity. Likewise, we want to fill the battery capacity very fast so that I don't have to wait in a queue. So there are advantages and disadvantages of fast charging. Uh, see, I'm, I'm just driving all of you to fast charging because fast charging is the place AI is heavily used. <laughs> so I'm cutting to the chase straight away. So that's why I chose that as a problem. So the advantage of fast charging is you don't have to wait. The disadvantage of fast charging is we end up damaging the battery physically and permanently. Right? Fast, char fast charging can lead to uh, the changes in the chemistry itself, leading to permanent uh, damage of the batteries. So in the, uh, the lead-acid world, so the typical charging current is one-tenth of the capacity. So uh, if, uh, if a battery is rated at 100 AH, the, the charging current is limited to 10 amps. If you charge it more than 10 amps, the battery is going to heat up and it is going to evaporate all the, uh, all the electrolytes. And uh, finally, it may end up melting the lead terminals themselves. Uh, so you can see the physical damage uh, uh, with your eyes if you overcharge your batteries or if you charge it with a very high current. The same problem happens with uh, the lithium chemistry batteries. If you overcharge a lithium ion, uh, brace up yourself, you have to call the fire department. It's going to explode for sure. So and the same thing applies to all batteries. So you cannot arbitrarily fast charge batteries. So all the cell phone explosion uh, stories that we hear are all because of wrong charging, right? Either you charge it with very high current or you charge it with too much voltage. So all of these lead to explosion. So we have to be very careful with uh, fast charging. So how do uh, the AH rating and the C rating relate to fast charging? So if, uh, if let's say if a battery is rated at one C, 
like uh, so it is measured as 1c 10c likewise 0.1c um, and things like that i mean uh, you can see those uh, ratings um, uh, on the battery itself so instead of 0.1c they say c10 so c10 means 0.1c so all the all the lead uh, based batteries will have uh, 10c 20c sorry uh, c10 and c20 kind of a rating but if you see the lithium chemistry batteries you will see uh, 1c 3c and in in lipo batteries you will see 20c 30c 50c and all so it actually tells you that you can uh, charge it with 30 times the rated capacity of the battery if the if the c rating was 30c so it's basically a game that we play with all these parameters right how do you play play a game with all these parameters such that you don't mess up with the chemistry of the battery you don't damage it uh, you don't damage the battery uh, permanently but still you achieve the objective of fast charging right so it is basically a data problem right you have a set of parameters which are measurable and you also have a set of metrics which are again measurable based on the temperature of the battery or uh, the size of the battery whatever so now we are trying to connect these parameters and choose an optimal policy for charging it's it's basically the ai problem that we are looking here is what is the best policy uh, to charge uh, the battery so uh, for example i'll tell you what you mean by fast charging if you if you look at your phone and if you have a fast charger essentially the the phone brick is charging your battery at 12 volts sometimes 18 volts also depending upon what it is designed but your batteries are rated for 5 volts remember that so when you when you increase your charging voltage you are pushing more current into the battery at a very high rate and if the battery is able to take it then yes you get really fast charging in 10 minutes you get 80% of the battery but uh, trust me if you do fast charging of your phones your battery is going to give up in less than a year that is guarantee so convenience versus longevity this is the trade off we uh, typically follow in today's uh, impatient world and the, the the alternate great opportunity is super capacitors so super capacitors are seen as an equivalent of a battery and super capacitors have infinite c so you can charge it with infinite current uh, at least in principle likewise you can also discharge it at infinite current but uh, super capacitors are more expensive uh, compared to the traditional chemistry based batteries so that's why they have not become very popular but still lot of research is going on where how you, we can replace batteries with super capacitors to get the fast charging benefit in no time right finally this is the layout we are looking at this is a generic uh, generic uh, ai structure so on the right hand side we have an optimization problem Uh, which is uh, driven by set of parameters in this example i am showing only three parameters but you can have several other parameters for the battery and all we do is we measure we we measure the different parameters for different settings and we take the feedback from the system and based on the feedback and based on whatever we have given as the input the closed loop will allow us to discover the best charging policy right it is in in the machine learning world this is called a reinforcement learning problem where you discover Uh, a style of how you charge your batteries without compensate uh, without compromising the quality or the life of the battery so the general layout is this it's a closed loop system and uh, 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 this is how ai is typically used the primary problem in storage is how do you charge a battery without uh, losing the efficiency so i'll stop here and uh, thanks very much for the opportunity thank you so much sir so now uh, i feel uh, that we are in a chemistry class so <laughs> so that does an opportunity to have an insight so like everyone is talking about the fast charging alone they don't know the basic chemistry where the artificial need to be integrated so that is the finest part you touched upon and uh, we could also see that uh, there is a fast charging concept which says that the faster the voltage the faster current is also there i square r the internal resistance you were talking about the internal resistance but uh, we feel as in a uh, uh, that is a generators or a low dispatch center people we would think that uh, whenever the fast voltage is been taken the transformer itself it is going to burst so in that case uh, my asking rate how i can bridge the people so because a uh, uh, 5 lakh people is going to charge instantaneously in that case uh, whether i can able to supply the power to that particular load or not so this is the uh, part we need to discuss and uh, 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 the first round was uh, completed in a such a way that we could have an opportunity to have an uh, insight of all these electrical engineers working on for uh, uh, artificial intelligence now the second round so integrating all such things uh, 
the specifically why, why an engineer it may be a mechanical engineer he may be an electrical engineer chemical engineer or whatever it may be so whoever it may be so they need to have an uh, integration with this engineering means the core engineering is very much important the energy is the universal source how we can go about integrating this artificial intelligence two minutes of your time so that we can uh, we are on time only so we can make it a uh, 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 listen but uh, I, I have not justified with the jagan sir so he was uh, uh, so uh, restricted himself with uh, five minutes of his timing so we can start with jagan sir you can take up uh, three minutes of your time sir please sir you can get, give an insight of how the startups are there and uh, what people can do in order to make sure that the engineering has a larger opening for them to start a company so we have a lot of opportunities right away so we have discussed many th such things please go ahead sir absolutely thanks for the another round of uh, you know we can take your time sir no problem <laughs> all right all right we got that so yeah it was very very interesting to listen to all of their points uh, and uh, you know we were complimenting each other i believe you know we started with the very high level and dr sudarshan you know finished with the real uh, implementation of ai with a real problem now coming back to the startups see i have the history of uh, founding you know seven companies in my past um uh, so well, starting up a company is it easy or not yes it's damn easy but what not easy is uh, to make a consistent effort and stay afloat. Uh, but don't be afraid. Uh, this is this is the better time to have a startup. Uh, there are there are people right out of the college starting uh, things. Uh, so there are there are two ways you could uh, do a startup. Right? Uh, you can have a funded company, which majoritarily. Uh, IITNs and all those, you know, the top pioneer uh, uh, students will probably end up with a funded company. Um, but do you really need a fund to start a company? I said no. Probably I would say no. Um, what are the opportunities you can look around? There, there are, I would say, you know, there are there are thousands of opportunities uh, we will come across every day. Uh, all you have to do is just be a listener. Uh, that's why, you know, we have uh, two ears and one mouth. So you listen, you listen to others, you listen to problems and uh, you see there is a opportunity and uh, it need not need to be a huge idea to be a successful startup. It can be as simple as a very small invention. Uh, it can be a small electromechanical device, uh, which helps, uh, you know, helps to store a battery efficiently, like Sudar said. Or it could be a lot, a lot bigger problem integrating all these data points with uh, a national grid system and coming up with some kind of a AI powered mobile app or anything. So uh, coming back to running a startup is actually um, startup is actually a culture. It's not a company. Uh, recently, you must have heard about uh, top companies uh, being run by Indian CEOs, right? You know, it gives a goosebump and it gives a uh, you know great feeling. Uh, to feel proud about that in our community is rising up at the right time and uh, we are being leaders uh, with the global community, right? Uh, but again, there is a history beyond that. You know, what people doesn't see that is uh, they only see the tip of the iceberg. A uh, lot of hard, hard work and effort has been uh, gone through all these leaders over the past 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, uh, uh, so they could rise to this level. Uh, that's I'm talking about a huge corporates. But running a huge corporate in terms of funding is a lot easy to run a, you know, create a startup because, you know, every challenge uh, is uh, given to the, the founder, co-founders and the initial team. So what do you really want to do? In my opinion, you know, the initial three startups, when I say startup, you know, people laugh at, uh, you know, most of uh, the college kids. Uh, my first startup was uh, when I was doing my first year in my college. So the company name was BMS, Blue Mountain Suppliers. Please don't think that it is an IT startup. I used to call a computer a stupid box by the time, you know, when I was doing first grade. Now, I'm not an engineer. I did my physics graduate, uh, undergraduation. Then I did uh, Master of uh, Science and Computer Science. And uh, while doing it, you know, I had uh, two failure startups. But we earned a lot of money. Blue Mountain Suppliers is nothing. But, you know, I, I saw a simple opportunity. 
uh, in the college, you know, we used to go for every college boys used to go and hang around in the evenings, right? So we had a tea hang around place, and I saw a board saying that uh, a new community is coming up with this area, 400 acre new community. It wasn't back in Madurai, right? Uh, it's outskirt of Madurai. So immediately it stuck me saying that, hey, why don't we put a small, uh, you know, um, uh, a shop in the evening? Uh, let's call, come over here. Three people we joined. We rented a shop for 250 rupees a month. And we spent around 1,000 rupees to buy a, 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 buy a table. And we got a pager. Uh, I don't know how many people even remember a pager. Uh, back in those days, we never had mobiles. You know, we had only pages. So we got a pager, one table desk. Uh, I, we, were, we were generating more than six to seven lakhs a month. You know, nobody could believe that. Uh, very simple thing. You go to this uh, brick manufacturer and tell them that, hey, I have 25 loads. You go to this all kind of manufacturing industries, right? Uh, so the new community is coming up. We saw an opportunity. Uh, there could be ample time to, uh, you know, penetrate. The, so the, we put, you know, the, the key point you have to notice it. How do you position yourself? Where do you want to put the shop? So if we had picked the shop at the end of the layout, the shop was, the, the owner was willing to give for 50 rupees. But we paid for 250 rupees to get that in the entrance nearby the layout board. So whoever enters, any engineers, any contractors, any subcontractors, anybody who has to go walk through, then we paid another tea wala to put a small tea shop in front of, uh, we paid him. We paid him, you know, 1,500 rupees or something like that to set up a tea shop. We also rented the same uh, building and one tea shop guys came over there. So every, and also we put some chairs and so you should have a small vision and you should know where to position yourself. And then you should know how to market yourself and how to network yourself. So then we obviously had the, you know, a background banner of, you know, we college students uh, trying to make a hard earned living. And, but, but God knows, you know, we never spent that money in the right way. Uh, you know, you know, your money comes with the college students, what we do, right? Uh, we all went to a Goa too, after two years and we busted all these money we saved. So that, I mean, the startup itself was not a failure, but the idea was grand. Then we completed computer science and then, then the history, you know, you can go and look into my LinkedIn profile and you can see that, you know, I had a grand failure in my undergraduation. And then uh, I, I, I wasted like two years of my time and I would say that that was not a waste. So everybody uh, may have a different uh, stories in their uh, uh, history, but that, that doesn't stop you. It, it doesn't matter where you come from uh, or what background you have or what the bank balance you have doesn't matter at all at this moment. All it needs is a, a honest idea, I mean, solid idea and a honest work towards the idea and go make yourself a kiddance with uh, industry people and uh, there is a great opportunity. If you guys are interested in, uh, you know, especially electrical, I mean, you know, please don't approach with, you know, I want to do some kind of uh, R&D. If you have a real passion that if you know electrical and electronics to the core, we have a great problem. You know, we are into artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning model building for one of the power metering industry. And we are willing to take up, you know, two, three interns by this January to June. It will be a paid internship. And I'm, I'm just, you know, giving an opportunity to you. So you could become a you know, entrepreneur uh, very easily. All you need is an idea. So, yeah, let me stop here. Yeah. Thanks yes, for that. Yeah. So, so the internship is uh, jointly. Uh, Absolutely. With myself and, and Jagan to set the context. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. Sorry, Sudhar. I forgot to tell that. Yeah. Very great, sir. So uh, it was a wonderful uh, experience that you have shared. It is not that uh, uh, what we have, the real Nichi was uh, something like uh, we have a myth saying that money didn't bring me to start a company. So that was the problem. So people think that I don't have a, I don't have huge sum to start a company. So they have a mindset. There is a mind block. I can put it in the other way around. There is a mind block. So you have given a clear picture. That is my experience. The year, the what is the asking rate? What is the demand is all about? And we start up the company according to the, the pager. So you were talking about the pager. Uh, it was an age-old technology where even before uh, Nokia phone was there. So Motorola. Now I mean to say Motorola or Nokia phone was there. So that was the technology. We moved around and we uh, run up the business because of that particular idea, connecting people, uh, communication. 
the communication part was lagging so as he said science uh, i am being a science graduate but uh, we need to make sure that the definition says that science is the body of language that explores the physical and natural world but uh, people most of the people doesn't learn this physics that's the problem engineering failure so why there is a engineering failure because we don't have a clarity on science like uh, sudarshan was talking about the chemistry of uh, uh, battery so because the science talks about the uh, physics chemistry and biology means engineer need to have more thought process on science as well as mathematics the calculation is very much important for an engineer to integrate uh, both the things so in such a scenario so people need to come up with a thought process it's not uh, uh, engineering uh, we, we need to talk about uh, only a slavery part where uh, unity be an employee getting a top most industry into it means we have large opening in all the industries we can uh, get together form a organization means we can start our own organization and entrepreneur that was a great insight jagan sir so uh, jagan sir also opened up with uh, uh, saying that there is an internship as well as he can also help out with starting the company so uh, he would be the perfect guide so sudarshan sir and jagan sir is there so who is the ceo of uh, the company so they are here to uh, encourage and they are sharing their experience to make sure that uh, you people as a budding engineers so they you can come up with uh, an entrepreneurship so in such words we would also connect uh, uh, the other people to come in a fast rate because already uh, we are running out of time so we can have two minutes of time uh, for everyone so sri J- sri raj balaguru sir your insight in artificial intelligence alone so artificial intelligence integrated to your area uh, yeah doctor so actually see this artificial intelligence that's what i said earlier Uh, this one is artificial intelligence we are the data how we are getting the data that we have seen but this data uh, we are uh, using for the day head schedule as well as for the intraday so matching the day head schedule and the intraday is a very big challenge and apart from that uh, uh, many uh, forecasting schedule providers are there that's what i want to point out the remc the renewable energy management center uh, the functioning here so lot of fsp forecasting schedule providers are there so these providers is a very big challenges they are using this what type of intelligence that is very very important challenge actually because that's what i said earlier the day head schedule and the intraday schedule intraday means day head means one day before we, we know what is the uh, uh, what is the uh, generation uh, this should be matched with your in, in intraday so intraday at a particular time so uh, if i we are talking by around 7 o'clock or 7:15 so what what is your uh, uh, generation so this should be matched with that so this depends upon the parameters as i said earlier the wind power density the irradiation everything it comes into a role so this fsp they use as you know the lot of machine learning algorithms you have uh, we are using the decision tree random forest svm technique spc technique all these techniques are using but which one brings you accuracy uh, that is a great challenge here in uh, the artificial intelligence yes thank you thank you sir so uh, like uh, you were talking about the real time experience although remc is there so it is a word which has been coined by every state but still the real time forecasting is not there so because uh, the renewable sector it's a green corridor we talk about green corridor we expand our business with electric vehicles and other uh, uh, grid connectivity but we don't have an intelligent system which can be imbibed to the existing system the seamless integration is not there so there is an asking rate where the uh, engineers need to come up with your, uh, their own technology although all the artificial intelligence techniques are there but still we don't have a, a, a brighter side to integrate uh, such areas very great sir so we would have a fast uh, uh, that is a, a greater c the c part we would have an research area srijit sir so please sir you can talk about the fast uh, uh that is um, uh, electric vehicle uh, artificial intelligence integration thank you sir uh, thanks for the opportunity for again for second time uh, so there were a lot of uh, discussion on uh, ai for smart grid uh, battery and all other uh, issues with the power system and all so let me just uh, finally conclude what i thought for uh, electric vehicles so we have seen a lot of artificial intelligence techniques are incorporated inside electric vehicle and it doesn't means that you need to do only for a job or research or anything there are a lot of benefits out of that 
Uh, for example, uh, we are, if you are having techniques such that uh, if you can just shift the charging station from here to there, obviously we are reducing a lot of the lot of waiting time. That's the best benefit for us. And when you're going for an optimal design, obviously the, we are expecting a better performance. So design-wise, performance-wise, it's better. Cost-wise, also we are getting a lot of benefits when you are incorporating AI inside. So, for example, uh, rather than charging at the peak demand time, if you're charging during the off-peak times, obviously we are going to get benefited. And when you're doing the peak, uh, when uh, the peak demand is reducing, obviously the emission is going to get reduced. And when you're incorporating all such things uh, in your renewable energy sources, and when you're making the best use of renewable energy sources for charging the vehicles, on one side, we are reducing the carbon emission. Obviously, we are making the world the best place to live in for our future. Right? So we are getting a lot of benefits out of that. It doesn't mean that it's only for work or for a research. A lot of benefits are there when you're incorporating AI inside electric vehicles. And we are all batting engineers here. So it's a very good chance for us, for you to learn in this stage. And while you're coming out, you'll be coming out with good colors. And it doesn't, one way, one thing I want to say in this is that it doesn't, if you don't want to have a big talent to go inside electric, I mean, uh, artificial intelligence. Just a basic knowledge of some language and just a few mathematical skills is enough if you want to enter into artificial intelligence. So hope that things will be done from your side. We are expecting the same from you all, batting engineers. Thank you for the opportunity and good luck. Thank Very you. great, sir. So, so you said that uh, uh, simple mathematics and a thought process and uh, a light push is uh, very much important for uh, global connectivity. So that is one part and uh, uh, that uh, emission, we are talking about the emission. So that is uh, very much important. So emission need to be reduced for the future engineers or the uh, budding people itself because uh, the global warming is a threat and the climatic action, whatever we talk about in international sustainability goals, we need to uh, have justice on that. So we need to work for uh, uh, such a transformation. So that would be heard from our uh, uh, beloved uh, Sendil Kumar sir. So you can uh, talk more about because uh, he has uh, done Gendis Transcon from uh, Sustainable Development Goals uh, 7 and 13. So right now, so people know about him on this area. So you just uh, two minutes of your time on uh, this Sustainable Goals, sir. Please, sir. Thank you, Ji. Thank you. Thanks for giving me the same time opportunity. Uh, before talking, I want to, what are the things need for AI in power systems? That is the thing. Complex and vers uh, versatile and large amount of information is used in the calculation, diagnosis and learning the data. And the increase in the computational time period and accuracy due to extensive and vast system data handling. Why vast system data? Right now, previously, we are very less. Uh, initially, also, I have mentioned previously, very 30 substations only in 1980s. And now 2021, we have a 130 number, 230 kV substation and uh, 110 kV, 1000 substations and uh, to 400 kV is also and HVDC and 1000, uh, lot of voltage levels are there. So ent uh, entire transmission line, we are going to manage, we are going to analyze what's the voltage hacking, where is the system concerned, dynamic loading and a lot of things are there. So these things are also, we want to check and is there any fault occurrences are there? So that thing we want to uh, discuss and analyze this data. So per day, 96 blocks. So uh, per day, 90, 96 blocks, eight, uh, per month, 874. Uh, 744 days, 744 hours, 31 days, 744 hours, and 30 days, 720 hours. So 720 into 96 plus, how much data? 87, hours block is there for the year. So we want to calculate for the five years time or two years period for calculate the everything, forecast and uh, system loading conditions, transformer loading condition, everything. Is it manually we are going to work? Maybe it will take more than a year and more than a month. So that's why we are going to implement it. Where are the, what are the applications of A in power systems are required right now? Operations of power systems like the unit commitment for forecasting, hydrothermal coordination during the peak cover generation, how, how to manage and how to save the water and utilize the power in a exact period. And economic dispatch, economic dispatch, depending upon the cost factor, we want to calculate that. Sometimes the peak hour period is the cost is going to 20 rupees also is possible. Sometimes during the high peak period, uh, our peak period is morning is 6 to uh, 10 and lighting period is 18 to 22 hours. So during that period, uh, during the two, period, two peak periods only, we are meeting out meeting with the high demand. Other than period, we have a less demand. So that's why we are going to... Uh, 
generate the other conventional power plant means that will have effect and the infip power re power is right now is uh, um, as per our mnre norms and uh, united nations sustainability goals are also everyone insisted the renewable power renewable power is a right now is a must and status so renewable power is a must and status implemented that is okay so how we are going to manage this condition this critical condition this is not sustained load it is a infim power sometimes it coming some immediately it will drop and the immediately dropping time we are going to manage that is a very difficult and the immediately on the times so right now is a lot of infrastructure are developed by our central electricity authority and then our able um, All, all the way throughout the world also real time market and intraday power purchases day head per purchase and lot of things are there ix through ix inter uh, indian energy exchanges also there so through we are going to purchase the power previously one day head purchase the power right now within a one hour we are going to plan to purchase the power suppose in case we have a any deviations or variations are there we are going to pay the penalty charge the penalty charge is also going to be higher so that's why we are going to manage in economic matters that's why the economic disposition is a must part so in this part also the a is a play the must role and then congestion management congestion management is the transmission is a lot of n number of transmission network is there we are going to calculate the transmission availability factor this is the must factor that is every month we are going to calculate and then one of the available available transfer capability that is a major plays a role because inter regional in india is having the five regions are there southern region eastern region western region northern region northeastern region five regions are there the five regions are connected in one grid one nation previously it is a um, two regions are there Unsynchronous, uh, asynchronous mode, and synchronous mode is there. Previously, new. That is a news. Actually, now it is a news from 2013 January onwards only. News. Previously, new and yes, 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 separately is there. Asynchronous mode. Now it is a news actually. So news means we are in case of any fault occurred in Tamil Nadu, it affects in the Jammu Kashmir also. So how it is possible? This is also the grid. That is a um, physically displacement method and we have to manage the grid and power transfer is there so that's why we going to manage so condition congestion management is there suppose in case the hcd is raigara to pugalur is line is there that is around more than seven states cross six states mm, six states crossed that is more than 2000 km and the one more line talchar pola 2000 km from orissa to karnataka the uh, dedicated power station from to Tamil Nadu, southern region, they have to supply the power, 2,000 megawatt. From Raigara to Pulu, 6,000 megawatt is there. So this, in case of that feeder tripping, how the system behave? This thing also we are going to study. So here itself also the A is there, must play the role. And then another thing, maintenance scheduling. Then maintenance scheduling is a n number of system. Every day we are going to give LC. Maintenance, maintenance for the breaker maintenance, line maintenance, CT replacement, new construction work, and lot of things. Are there. How we are going to manage through system wise? We are going to and at that time load flow steady is also steadied. And when we are they are going to take previously when they are available and when they are going to available in the next month and the everything going to planning. That thing also transmission manage outage management system. We are going to manage everything and conduct the meeting also. And then state estimation. State estimation is also the another important play role for that a important system. And the one more thing, the load and power flow is there plays a major play role for that generation and demand balancing. So this things are also more uh, important for that. Right now, who are all, uh, right now I am also pressing the PhD on the time, I have the smart grid technology was implemented in the artificial intelligence technology. So in smart grid technology is implemented in future, it will come. Actually, our last time I also mentioned it. Previously, decentralized environment and then centralized environment. Now it will go to again decentralized environment. So decentralized environment again implemented means it is a vast uh, Most areas and how we are going to manage and how we are going to stabilize and how we are going to give the supply without any interruption. These things are also so through uh, a yeah, it is possible. So one smart grid system is there. Smart grid system is there means wind power, solar power, and uh, so many things are there. So that's why we are going to manage in a paka manner. So that's why artificial intelligence is a right. Right period to implement and lot of projects also there research are also there. So who are all interested? They are ready to come forward to working on that and uh, support that uh, real time uh, effect. Definitely, it will give the uh, very much support to that uh, carrier also. Thanks to you, Jay, for giving me a wonderful opportunity.
thank you so much so you have outburst your thought process where there is a need and uh, the people are looking at uh, uh, there is no idea or where to generate idea so we uh, you we people are here to uh, supply that idea and uh, you need to work on with your project so that's what uh, you are talking about and uh, uh, all the engineers who are looking uh, in this area so they are working on uh, uh, electrical engineering or any other part of uh, engineering like say uh, so there is a need there is a demand and uh, there is a problem so the, there is a problem as such so we need solution who else can help me uh, help me out so that's what uh, so the demand is there so who can bridge this gap means the students who are pursuing their degree or pursuing their phd they can work on it so that is the asking that right? means so you have given a greater insight of that particular area sir so thank you for this insight and uh, tamil nadu electricity board faces a lot of issues during the cyclone and other area alone not that but uh, in normal time too we have such problems where which need to be tackled which is all this human brain so he talks about 96 blocks uh, per uh, day means it says uh, 766 or uh, it is more than the count where uh, abt and other meters are been integrated with intelligence means uh, so uh, we can have uh, uh, seamless integrations of the technology uh, imbibed with artificial intelligence uh, where the decentralization decentralization is the decision making the blockchain technology which is booming like anything it can be integrated into the system to make a decision making means it's a need of the hour we need to talk about it and uh, it's already we are running out of time so it's more than 15 minutes more what we have planned so we can listen from sudarshan sir so you are closing remarks please sure uh, okay you okay you are always putting me on a clock bala <laughs> no 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 uh, we can go ahead because we, we just want to have some q and a so nothing to worry you can talk uh, take your time i'll no i'll problem. keep it brief i'll keep, keep it brief so see i think uh, it's very very clear that uh, the demand is there from the industry for solving a lot of problems and more importantly all the stakeholders have also said explicitly that they have lot of data at their disposal but they do not know what to do with it and another gentleman said uh, okay the data is there and we have been practicing machine learning but we don't know which model is the right model to solve the problem right these are all standard industry problems uh, which uh, which the market is uh, uh, having and they want someone to come and solve these problems for them and we are expecting uh, today's generation students to go and solve it maybe uh, uh, sometimes some some companies and startups can also go and solve these problems but leave the startups aside but let's look at what can the students do today uh, let's say people who are graduating this year or next year what can they do to prepare themselves so that they can become useful uh, to the industry for whatever problems the industry is keeping it hot and open right the following are the strategies so the first thing that you'll have to do is to is to have a thorough understanding of the domain right if you take uh, the generation and distribution domain uh, see whatever these tangent co uh, gentlemen are speaking about these things cannot be taught in the engineering curriculum right it will not be taught in electrical engineering of course you would have studied about what are the various things about transmission you would have studied about how an electrical machine run and how a generator operates all these theory has been taught but the actual uh, style with which uh, tangent co has been implemented nobody will know only the tangent co professionals will know so the way you can get the domain knowledge is by doing internships at tangent co that is possible and i think uh, tneb guys welcome that I mean, I've seen people doing internships at TNEB, different areas. So I think uh, if if the students uh, want to solve some of the uh, distribution problems or uh, measurement problems or analytics problems for uh, Tangent Co, probably you should def uh, you should consider one or two internships during your curriculum itself. This is step number one, which will get you some clarity on the domain knowledge, right? where you are going to deploy your skill set second is your ability and capability or let's say capability and skills to solve problems that someone might ask you to solve right so how you can improve your skills and abilities uh, one thing is if you are an electrical engineer the scope for ai as a part of your electrical engineering curriculum is very small i mean i don't think ai courses are taught as a part of the electrical engineering curriculum or electronics engineering curriculum so most of the electrical guys uh study ai or data science as an extra 
right you can you can go definitely outside there are a lot of training institutes there are a lot of free training uh, possibilities online where you can learn about uh, the fundamentals of uh, uh, so problem solving right so that is another uh, aspect so you have the domain knowledge you have little bit of skills and capabilities the third most important point is connecting the dots this nobody can teach you there is no training institute to teach you even tangent co guys cannot teach you <laughs> because if they knew how to connect the dots they would have solved the problem already <laughs> so the point here is this is where skill comes into play so people who have experience in domain knowledge and people who have experience in solving problems in the data science world they are the ones who can connect the dots right so this the connecting the dots cannot be done by the student so if you expect a student to do it sorry the the success rate is very bad so only seasoned uh, practitioners of ai can can solve this problem solve this problem and uh, either you hire the seasoned practitioner from outside or uh, the domain fellows like the tangent co gentleman can pick it up you can pick it up you can pick up that skill so instead of expecting an outsider to come uh, with the capability why not you go pick it up uh, as just like a fun exercise right it, it can be done so if you uh, if you have uh, uh the uh, the interest to pick up little bit of uh, data analytics skills little bit i mean if you know how to use excel to solve problems you are you are top notch you are great you are ready right so but that willingness to go and apply the collected data into some systems right one gentleman said i'm sorry i, I don't recall his name immediately um one gentleman said they have tried uh, building models on the data right such capability is what i'm referring to so um so if you have such capability uh, already then it is very imperative that you get external students from uh, from outside uh, to come and work on the problems and ideas that you have because you have a day job you cannot do run, you cannot build models I, i understand that it's impossible for you to do wt but what you can uh, what you can do is you can delegate the work to these interns who have the machine learning and ai skills but they do not know how to connect the dots they don't know if you teach them how to connect the dots then you will start seeing a lot of productivity from these students so uh, ma- many of the internships fail for the employer not on the intern side for the employer is because the employer is not able to extract the work from the interns and they expect the interns to solve problems for them that is never going to work if the employer knows how to instruct the interns interns can do a much better job that's what i've seen in my experience right when i give the instructions explicitly to the interns or an young grad who has joined the company as an employee if my instructions are clear and i get better outputs from these uh, employees or students that's that's what my experience has been it's seldom you, it's very it's a very rare scenario where you get a brilliant uh, intern who understands before you when you open your mouth <laughs> like google right uh, you just type the first two three characters that it will start predicting <laughs> right <laughs> so that in real life it is not really happening so what i'm saying is from the student side please show interest in understanding the domain knowledge second is uh, have practical experience or practice experience on building tools and techniques and implementations for solving problems and take the help from an expert a domain expert for connecting the dots the the combination of this setup in my opinion will turn out Uh, to be a very productive and a fruitful endeavor and i'm sure tangent co might solve many problems uh, in the in the near to far future time so that that would be my take thank you thanks for that yes sir. so uh, it was a greater insight of uh, such uh, uh, connecting dots so the main issue is that uh, you are uh, uh, linking with the hrd as well so the human resource value is very much important in connecting such dots because uh, any organization need to have a rich experience of uh, hrd where the government services are lagging begin where they lose lot of things so like uh, the problem is been identified the people so where they can bridge it uh, so the individual cannot play double role so as he said so the data is accumulated and we 
also work for uh, such intelligence so those technologies which has come up all because of uh, those engineers work day and night in bringing about the changes uh, hats off to those engineers who have come up with uh, such a wonderful uh, uh, enlightenment to the world so that is one part and uh, coming to the second part the indians who come to uh, come here so they have a vast knowledge of everything and they want to uh, uh, round about the area for one month and go away with a certificate that is the uh, part they look at and uh, if there is any assignment given to them they say that uh, sir it is not my problem it's your problem you need to solve it so we can't help you out so i i don't have such knowledge to explore and uh, so provide a solution but uh, they, uh, a good hrd can make sure that these two guys can be uh, interlinked and come up with a solution where the larger part of the society has a problem and that problem is uh, uh, coming with a solution means uh, this engineering would be uh, uh, like say it is an integrated solution so that's what one we point, uh, uh, one point i can uh, uh, make here uh, balavagar yes yes, if, yes uh, let's say if if uh, some of your tangent co uh, colleagues right um, uh, have interest in learning data science i can come and teach them if you want very great sir so uh, we we can privately come here so yeah. even uh, we are talking privately here so we do not know how the restrictions are. so we are more interested in learning that we doctorates we three people have done doctorates and uh, uh, we, we just uh, work in a different area where the actual research cannot be implemented so that's where there is a restriction because uh, there is a hierarchical chart in government organization where the ladder cannot be overruled so that is uh, the drawback of any organization that cannot be discussed here but the engineering uh, technology so where we are connected iet or iei or uh, i ieee or iigen so we just have a larger part of the connectivity where we can give uh, exploring our thought process bringing us a solution that's where we can work on so uh, as timing is running up uh, so cloudy sir so would there be any timing Ah, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, actually, uh, Sudarshan sir mentioned only tangent only. Actually, I am talking about the entire world facing this problem. Not oh, okay. only tangent go. This is not only the problem faced by only tangent go. Sir, I have one lifetime, sir. I have one lifetime, sir. I have only one lifetime, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So, we, we have... Uh, we have provided uh, because in 1985 itself uh, for the entire country we have provided supply means uh, they have a mindset that the tangent tangent co is the biggest organization doing grateful things so that's what uh, tamil nadu tamil nadu is only the best in the electricity board of the in india sir actually tamil nadu uh, is the first uh, state has to come to 230k lines in 1965 so right. it's 1964 state dispatch center is i have lot of data sir that <laughs> i suppose yes. i want to <laughs> yeah, we can discuss <laughs> offline sir we can discuss yes, sir. Uh, maybe yes sir yes sir yes sir thank yes, you yes indil sir so thank you so like uh, we are uh, we are about to get into the insight of the students so who have raised up their queries so uh, starting from sudarshan sir so like uh, we have a question so from uh, ria sagamad kashi comments india uh, limited so yes queried on use of afi energy conservation so uh, your uh, uh, thought process on it sir so yeah, see, of, it's, it's very simple I mean uh, if if we re- reduce the wastage right whatever you you save uh, by by reducing the wastage that is conservation Right. That's so. My point is, you know, as Jagan was mentioning, right? I mean, there used to be a time when he gets scolded for not turning off the fan. Now people don't really care about, you know, uh, letting uh, the juice leak everywhere, uh, right? But <laughs> as long as as long as we we conserve energy by means, uh, what I mean by that is, as long as we don't waste energy uh, by by optimizing the utilization of the available energy, then that's that's inherent conservation. So if if the question was about how do you store energy, it's a, it's a different uh, discussion altogether. But conservation through AI is seen can be seen as an optimization problem. So you have the source and you have the consumption, but how do you optimize? How do you do maximum power transfer or how do you maximize power utilization without wastage? That is uh, a standard AI problem or a standard mathematical problem to solve. And there are a lot of work available. Uh, uh, around uh, optimization of processes. So that would be answer, by my answer, sir. Very great, sir. So, 
uh, going forward. So, uh, uh, Srijit sir, so what is the main role of uh, artificial intelligence in electrical and electronics engineering by a student uh, named S. Annamalai from KCG College of Engineering? So, uh, your uh, one word answer or one line answer, sir. <laughs> Uh, hello, sir. Do you want, me, uh, do you want yeah, yeah. me to repeat the query? So, no, 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 I had, sir. yeah, yeah, I yes, answer. Okay. Actually, if you take electrical and electronics engineering, each and every problem we come up on uh, has an application of AI inside that. If you're just taking a power system, the basic problem from uh, economic load dispatch, optimal power flow, unit commitment, security concern, unit commitment. Everything has an application wherever because most of the works have already done. A lot of people are working on that, applying AI for these kind of problems. Uh, fax devices, optimal location of fax devices, all such things needs AI now. And of course, when you go for control system tuning of controllers, if you go for power converters, we have control inside, how to tune all those things. Everywhere in days of electrical and electronics engineering, there is a scope for AI inside. If you take renewable energy source also, we are going for tracking maximum power uh, from the solar panel. We have FPPG algorithms. There are also AI is involved. Every I just told about electric vehicle. I mean, six market. There's huge options for AI inside. So if you take each and every problem statements inside an electrical electronics engineering stream, you have a lot of scope for AI inside. Thank you, sir. That's Thank it. you. Thank you. So this question is for Jagan, sir. So what are all the innovative things that can be done in this field, which is human friendly and cost effective? And what are all the drawbacks or limitations of A in this field? So whether the limitations can be overcome. So uh, she has a desperate uh, uh, on the A solutions. Uh, one of the students named uh, Preeti P from uh, uh, Hindustan Institute of Engineering Technology. So uh, please, sir. Jagan, sir. So uh, I think uh, uh, Jagan, sir. Okay, so uh, human friendly and cost effective. I can uh, uh, make sure that whichever is cost effective means so the technology is always there. So we need to blend it according to the need. Uh, when we say that uh, we need all sort of IoT sensors integrated to your waste management, uh, in a, uh, like uh, always Sudarshan sir used to say that uh, example. So like uh, all the sensors were integrated in a dustbin and the end of the day, nothing was working. So a camera was working uh, an instantaneous effect where the guy who is transporting that uh, waste, he takes a photograph with a GPS on means it's the simplest solution that we can give back to the society. So that is the intelligence we can integrate. It's not that we always need to integrate with uh, clumsy solutions with all such technologies. So thank you. So uh, this question is for uh, uh, Balaguru, sir. So artificial intelligence in communication system integrating GPS, SOS and sensors uh, by a uh, student named student uh, uh, Bhumi Harishri uh, uh, from M. Kumarasamy College of Engineering. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Actually, uh, I said uh, there are two types of technology. One is wired technology, another one is wireless technology. So as you know, wireless technology is your, uh, uh, everybody knows that, so even a Bluetooth, IR, Zigbee, uh, now uh, 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 LoRa, LoRa technology, VSAT, RF, everything, now GPS, everything here. And apart from that, the economical thing is, uh, particularly the Tangipo is concerned, any STB, not only Tangipo, any STU, the optical power ground wire network. So we have a uh, uh, 110 kV network, 230 kV. Uh, so using this wired communication, that is the best solution and uh, the uh, economical thing, actually. Uh, instead of going, because we are paying more amount for the GPR alone. So instead of that, even if you go for any wireless technology, we have to pay for, uh, pay for it. And rather than we can go for the wired technology, uh, so that will uh, that is reliable as well as you will get a very good uh, bandwidth and the frequency. So that that is the main thing. So these are all the thing here in uh, communication. And one more thing I want to point out here: when uh, particular the opportunity, see renewable energy is not only the platform for electrical. That's what I want to point out here. 
when you say electrical electrical law is not like an electrical see there are when you say con conservation of energy uh you can store chemical energy or mechanical energy lot of energies uh, you can store in stock say if you going for a biomass uh in stock going uh, converting to your electrical rather than you can use that gas uh, uh, for a for a cooking cylinders also so this will be one part of uh, conservation uh, we can do uh, so and moreover the opportunity is also the renewable energy is not only for the electrical you see lot of mechanical energies are there in uh, in uh, wind power uh, wind power plants for the manufacturing industry and chemical in uh, chemical industry for the batteries and for this uh, uh, civil engineer green building as you know and uh, your it and the communication for the internet technology so everything is there for uh, it's a platform for all uh, discipline all uh, areas we have a uh, platform for all uh, engineers the students have a wide opportunity in all the areas not only the electrical in all uh, engineering we have that so thank you so much sir so it's uh, uh, available everywhere so uh, the, that makes sense and uh, now uh, uh, we have a question for uh, sindil sir so what are all the ways artificial intelligence can be used to monitor the uh, uh, battery as well as load dispersion or in common so a faculty from Uh, named uh, Dr. S. Joseph Jagavagar from Arunachala College of Engineering for Women. So he has queried. So your insight on uh, how the AI can be used for monitoring. So uh, we can put it in general. Your uh, uh, one uh, one word or one line answer, sir. Uh, your insight, sir. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yes. 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 Please, right, right. actually monitor the battery battery system is also must right now the monitor the battery is also get right now we are planning to implement the electric vehicle uh, because uh, after our implementation of the full electrical vehicles monitor is monitor is required so how to monitor the battery is also must thing and then one more thing the forecasting technique right now also implement the ai techniques so in this we want to develop further Additionally, new uh, you know AI and uh, data mining and a lot of things and a lot of data. So you want actually 15 minutes data, one hour data, half an hour data, one minute data, and the seconds data also we have to collect and monitor the uh, environment climate condition. It will be very much useful to uh, support that thing for uh, load dispatch and uh, grid operation. Balamur. Ah yes sir yes sir so thank you so much and uh, we would have uh, another uh, one or two questions of people are about to leave it's already one and a half hours time so uh, we'll have uh, just uh, two uh, uh, questions uh, from uh, uh, the uh, guys who have queried so uh, this is for uh, uh, jagan sir or uh, sudar sir so how to transform normal homes to smart homes by a student named janestri n vivekananda college of engineering for women yeah sure uh, uh, jagan uh, actually has, has gone out for a client meeting so uh, okay i'll i'll answer the question so the way to do uh, a normal home to a smart home uh, is by interconnecting uh, the equipment uh, appliances and devices which are present there uh, in in some form of iot right uh, so if if all these devices that can generate data can talk to each other or let's say talk to a central server uh, where uh, the decisions can be taken Uh, for when it should be turned on when it should be turned off such and such uh, then automatically your home becomes a smart home right so if if your uh, if your air conditioner is turned on or if it let's put it this way if the air conditioner is turned off after few hours of cooling that's going to save a lot of energy uh, for instance if the lights are turned off uh, when there is nobody uh, sitting in uh, in the hall or let's say if it is partially turned off if nobody is sitting in the hall and whenever someone shows up you turn on all the lamps that allows allows us to save a lot of energy and avoid wastage so essentially what we'll have to do is we'll have to make every appliance generate data and that data should be collected and moved to a central server where decisions can be taken and if that is arranged uh, then uh, the home becomes smart home and uh, jagan's company which is bootstrap drive uh, is is a is a leader in that space just have a look at bootscap.io then you you will get a lot of ideas about how to do it yes thank you thank you sir so we will have the last question so like uh, 
uh, we can uh, uh, put it to so like um, uh, we would have uh, um, one question. So the last question is from uh, a student and uh, Priyanka G from KCG College of Engineering. So she has also a, the common question: How uh, to be a successful in uh, uh, a, uh, selecting a career with A and data science? So uh, 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 please throw light on it. Uh, so either uh, uh, Srijit sir or uh, uh, Balaguru sir, so you can put forward. So Srijit sir, so you are insight, please. How to choose the successful career? Uh, sir, I am out of words for this one because I'm uh, just in the research field. Okay? So I'm not going much into this question. Very great, sir. So, Sudarshan, sir, it's your choice. You can go ahead. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, so, if you so can you repeat the question one more time? Uh, no, how to have a successful career in A and data science. So sure, that's okay. the, 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 the question uh, will have a counter question. You'll have to define what is the meaning of success here. Uh, so if if uh, if success is defined by the amount of money that you make, the answer is different. And if the success is defined by what is the type of problem you solve, uh, then the answer is going to be different. Uh, so I will I will uh, take the second one. I don't care about the money part. So let's say if you get a kick out of solving problems, uh, or you you get excited about solving problems, and uh, let's say one year down the line, if you look back and see that you have solved several problems. Uh, then uh, you are automatically happy about what you have been doing so far. So the success criteria uh, is the measure of how many problems or what are the variety of problems that you can solve or you have solved already, right? So that is a success criteria. So see, data scientist is a role not given by the title. You don't become a data scientist if you are given a job title as data scientist. You become a job. You, you become a data scientist when you have the ability to translate a real life problem into a data science problem, and followed by solving the data science problem using uh, techniques that are available uh, in machine learning uh, and deep learning and AI kind of suites. Then you can call yourself a data scientist. That that is the that is the only time you become a data scientist. So you are not a data scientist by title, whereas you are a data science data scientist by deliverance. And what you did, what you delivered, only that makes you a data scientist. So the answer is, uh, I think it is self-exploratory. Yes. So uh, the, the, the question continues is, uh, by, with another student. So a student, uh, Tanmay Pati from SRM Institute of Science and Technology. So uh, 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 the question is, how fast is A dominating the humans in core field? And will it have any negative impact on upcoming technology? With this, we can close. So because uh, we started with artificial intelligence, whether it is helpful to human being or it is a menace to the society. So that's what been coined here. So we can put for uh, with your thought process, please. Mind, mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Okay. See, uh, AI being a friend or a foe uh, is uh, dependent on how you are going to consume it. So far, AI does not have the capability to become a foe. I mean, four means enemy. Okay. Uh, see, so far uh, AI has been put to use only in assistive technologies, and uh, uh, AI has not been uh, utilized uh, in the real life, uh, which will replace human beings. So it has not been uh, done yet, uh, but it might happen in the future, where human beings might uh, get replaced by machines. But I'll give you an example. Uh, when was the last time you decided to do something yourself? Just ask this question, all of you. Uh, most of the times, your decisions are driven by something else. Either you got an email from someone saying that this is on sale or uh, you, you had made a purchase. Uh, just think, when was the last time you decided to purchase something because you needed it and you went and bought it yourself without referring your phone? Uh, I cannot remember. <laughs> when I did it last time without uh, taking help from a phone or a website or whatever. So the decision process or the ability to take decisions, which is one of the hardest tasks for a human being, is already being offloaded to machines. Uh, if we are ignorant of it, then we cannot do much. But our decision-making ability is already being offloaded to machines or systems. So that has become a part of our life already, uh, right? It is nothing new. And so far, the ability uh, to take decisions 
being offered as an assistive tech by uh, external agencies have been helpful have been so far helpful to us and uh, but it might happen in the future that it can be uh, it can become bad also i mean if some if you get persuaded to do something uh, uh, bad uh, because you did not think about it then it can turn out to be a four four example so ai has already become a part of our life right we have not recognized it as a threat yet but it can become a threat if it is misused so i have learned ai and i've been practicing ai for the past 22 years just to fight against its unfair use if someone uh, is going to use it unfairly then i will be there to fight against it and i'm sure uh, all the researchers uh, who are doing uh, top notch research in ai should also pay attention to the morality uh, the equality and fairness uh, in how ai is used because ai is a very powerful tool and it can be abused it can be misused uh, to take advantage so i think uh, the veterans of ai should uh, should definitely fight when ai is misused by someone and i hope there is a consortium in the near future which regulates the uh, application of ai right now there is no consortium there is no uh, guideline there is no law which protects uh, people against unfair use of ai it's kind of vague the law is very vague i think we should have a, a forum uh, or a or a, a top body which regulates fairness uh, uh, for fairness uh, ai fairness uh, right that should be there and i think people are talking about it already to form a body and i hope in my lifetime i see one <laughs> thank you sir so thank you so uh, we have a lot of insights and uh, now uh, iet and kcg college has uh, made a pathway so like uh, there is a road map that where i need to start where i need to go and uh, uh, people also have a uh, knowledge of uh, what is uh, ai and machine learning integrated with artificial intelligence to the existing system so coming to the uh, conclusion so a lot of uh, students have come up with their own questions uh, with a similar idea so uh, their names would be read out at a later time so thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, all the panelists so they have spent their time uh, uh, their precious time so i mean to say that uh, because uh, the weekend would be celebrated with the family but still they have share, they have come up with their own uh, thought process of spending one hour of time but uh, i have loved the time by more than one and a half hours so sorry for it but anyhow thank you so much stay after your goals if the path you are not uh, doesn't work change the path not your goals so as uh, sudarshan was talking about uh, so it is not a foe it is uh, always a friendly attitude that everyone need to have so thank you so much all the panelists and the people who are connected thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity we'll stay back uh, for uh, our uh, um, uh, organizer so uh, dr claudine sir uh, please thank you yeah it's a very wonderful and excited moment we had for the past two hours of time so let me take the opportunity to deliver the official word of thanks let me thank the management and principal of kcg college of technology uh, for giving us the permission to conduct this event let me thank uh, head of the department it dr frank vijay and all the fellow colleagues for the support they have rendered and it's my responsibility to thank the office bearers of institution of indian technology that is a iit chennai local network uh, for being the uh, strongest support behind the successful conduct of this event and it's my pleasure to extend my sincere thanks to dr balamurugan who is my friend and uh, who is a moderator of today's successful event uh, in fact not only a moderator Uh, i will call them as a coordinator he has coordinated all the members in a very professional way we have he has created a whatsapp group and connected and we shared all the information in a group and professionally we were connected uh, to bring out a successful outcome of this event yeah thank you balamurgan sir and let me thank mr uh, jagan uh, really i was inspired by his uh, profile and he is doing a lot of things to the society and especially the he gave a very motivational inspiration to the uh, young students those, those who can uh, come out with their own startup so i thank him uh, my th sincere thanks to dr shrijit for sharing his insights as an academician 
uh, what academic people can contribute towards the uh, AI in terms of the implementation part in the core engineering domain. And I thank Dr. Sudarshan for his uh, powerful words and the, uh, the words of caution. The, the, he concluded with the AI has to be used in a, a correct way. So that is the need of the time. And the people, they may think the technology, it's, it's a double-edged sword. So we have to use the technology in a, a very respectful and a positive aspect. Uh, so that's it, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, let me thank the, the power behind, which if we're running the Tamil Nadu, that is the engineer uh, Balaguru and engineer Senthil Kumar, who are positioned in a high position in the uh, Tamil Nadu Electricity Board. And you have come forward to spare your valuable time to share your expertise to the uh, young students. Uh, really, I'm very much thankful to the, all the uh, panel members. Uh, we will be connected as part of KCG College of Technology as well as, as part of IET. And it's my pleasure to thank uh, the MC of today's ceremony, uh, Malati, my student, and Janani and Preeti who are joined with Malati to introduce the guest. Thank you, uh, my dear students. And it's my pleasure to extend my thanks to the host of today's event, Mr. Pawan, and the technical support provided by Mr. Nibin uh, for uh, telecasting this uh, event in the YouTube and successfully running this event uh, through this online platform Zoom. And it's my pleasure to thank all the participants from various colleges, various institutions as part of the IET. Uh, you are joined here, the student and faculty members joined. So I extend my sincere thanks to you all. Uh, I think the feedback link has already posted, so you can give your valuable feedback uh, through the link. So stay connected with this uh, technical forum. We will meet again in another possible opportunity of connecting each other. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir.